Now I'm very happy to have you all here for the next talk on yeah, a really important topic. And we all called uh, last year for more creative campaigns um, on all our issues that we talk about here at Congress. And so the Pen Collective thought about a really creative campaign that also got a lot of attention in the last year. And because they call for all the intelligence officers to really exit their careers and to find some other yeah, more valuable um, service to our society. I'm very honored to introduce Gloria Spindle to you, who is a former Google Nest uh, employee. You might remember that uh, great campaign and will now present um, the Intel exit to you. Thank you. Your applause. Hello. And hello to all the live streaming people out there as well. Bloop, bloop, we can see you. I hear there are a lot, maybe more than what's in this room. Oh, the lights are dimming. Okay, so I don't know if anyone else is as interested in the, in the parts of the Snowden documents as I am, which are the kind of little cultural tidbits that you find that give you a sense of what it's like to be within the Secret Service. I'm really kind of fascinated by this particular gentleman, the Sig Int philosopher, who was a columnist uh, for the NSA on their internal newsletter. And he's really cr quite creative, and he writes a lot of um, kind of pieces about the ethical quandaries of working in the secret services. And most of them end with just like, you should just keep your head down, and you should just keep doing what you're supposed to be doing, because that's the best way to go ahead and protect your country. Um, so this, this quote is really the, the kind of crux of what Intel ex the Intel Exit initiative is founded on. We recognize that people who are working in the secret services, and I'm sure some of you in the audience tonight are working in the secret services. <laughs> Pretty certain there's some disgruntled, maybe unhappy, maybe ethically confused people working in spy agencies. Maybe you're just a contractor and you feel like, oh, I'm not so involved, but I still feel like I have blood on my hands. And those are the people that Intel Exit is talking to. That was like half a clap. I mean, come on, people. <laughs> Can we have a bit? Thank you, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Don't be afraid of clapping. <laughs> so those are the people that Intel Exit is really talking to. And we wanted to reach out to those people because there hasn't been a campaign yet that has actually recognized that they are humans working, thousands and thousands of people going every day to their surveillance jobs, operating drones, and even the people who are just answering emails or you know, pushing paper, running the photocopy machine, if they even have those, who knows what they have in there. Those people, there are people who obviously have ethical issues about working um, in, in these in these systems and feel responsible for mass surveillance, drone warfare, and the slow, maybe fast, degradation of demo democracy as we know it. So, introducing Intel Exit. <laughs> so, what Intel Exit does is it's an, it's an initiative, a civil initiative, grounded in the idea that we need to find a way to support people who want to leave their jobs at the Secret Services. And we need to normalize the idea of quitting. <laughs> because actually, it's a, it's a, it's a very just and, and sometimes honorable thing to do, just to follow your ethics and give up your job if you don't feel like you're contributing to society in a good way. <laughs> so, so that's my Intel exit pitch. Um, some of you might know I'm from Peng, as it was introduced earlier, and we 
um, are known for our hoaxes and our media hacks and our culture jamming. So Intel Exit has been a really, really interesting campaign for us, and I'll explain it as I go, um, because, of course, you see it's a bit of performance and it's a bit of humor, but it's also very serious at the same time. So just to introduce uh, uh, Peng to you, for those who don't know, um, here we were, this was at Republica, impersonating Google managers um, and presenting some really creepy data collecting products, a personal drone for daily life, um, an app that monitors your, well -being, your emotional well-being and matches you with other people who also need a hug. Um, and creepy thing about that is most of those dystopian visions have now actually come to light and are existing in the real world today. Actually, people do use drones to follow their children to school. That's a real thing. Um, so, and here we are impersonating the, uh, the leading party of Germany, and here we are on live television cracking an egg over the head of a presenter of a very dodgy television program. And this was our uh, program to uh, self, to provide self-help for trolls, sexist trolls on Twitter. All of you. And that was our self-help coach. We had a bot army, which was which well, we had a language analysis happening on Twitter, and then we had an army of 160 bots, which were going out and enrolling p uh, trolls on Twitter into our self-help program, and sending them nice, inspirational videos every day to help cure them. <laughs> So as you can see, we, have a, we utilize a range of tactics and techniques in um, what we call campaigning. Some people call it art, some people call it theater, some people call it a joke, <laughs> some call it entertainment. Um, but we see it as campaigning, and what we're constantly trying to do is to shift the narrative. We look at, shift the narrative around various social justice issues. We look at issues which we think that really need um, a kind of different spin happening in the media, and then we take them and we find a way to reframe them and then we push them out and hope that we get a lot of attention. So we started looking at the issue of surveillance and the secret services. And uh, well, quickly one runs into the obstacle of how do you talk about this? Like we have these, we have these cliches of, you know, the eye and, um, you know, Edward Snowden's face and, we have these visuals that kind of don't really mean anything anymore, and, and, and everyone really struggles to actually understand what the issue means, and, and how do we talk about the secret services when they're completely inaccessible to us? So this is a photo, for example, um, of the regulations for taking photographs at Fort Meade. You see, you're not really allowed to take photographs of the buildings. So if you start with that as a kind of metaphor for the inaccessibility of uh, the secret services to our general culture. We can't even, we don't even have visuals for them. We've got like one photo of the NSA that floats around the internet and just gets repurposed and repurposed. Um, we, we can't access these people, we can't access their structures, we can't access the information. Yes, we have leaks now, but like how do we actually, how do we open it up more? And that's, that was the question we kept asking ourselves. Um, these are the, yeah, you've got this issue of intangibility, and then you've also got the issue that everything is so secret. I mean, even if like, a Christmas card is sent internally in, uh, in the NSA, it's classified as top secret. Um, then you've got technology, which is so complicated, and the general public can't understand it, and it's like all these acronyms and these like, weird flow charts and bad design, and it's just really complicated. And then, of course, there's fear. And, and fear is really crippling. I mean, for activists ourselves, for civil society, it's like really difficult. We don't, want to, we don't want to broach this issue. We don't want to step into it because it's scary. Because once you step into it, that means that you're a target, of course. Um, and also, funnily enough, then fear is also the, the, the way the narrative is often shaped. This is what we use to try and raise awareness about surveillance. We make people afraid. We, um, you know, we talk about this invincible, dark danger of surveillance creeping in on us, no one knows if they're being watched or not, and, um, and this, is, this we think is, is a narrative that really needs to be shifted. So we wanted to find a way to talk, to bring hope, to bring a positive image um, 
to this to this narrative, and and also to bring bring it down to humans, like not to talk about technology, um, not to talk about these dark and complex systems, but to talk about the people and talk to the people who are upholding these structures. So this is what we came up with. Right now, thousands of people work in the shadows of the intelligence community. They don't ask questions. They follow orders, keep their heads down, do their work. But what happens when you see something you can't forget? <coughs> when you realize that the system you are part of is chipping away at democracy every hour, every day. You feel stuck, overwhelmed. Some people have already made the decision to leave. Others are thinking about it every day. Intel Exit helps people break free from the intelligence community and build a new life. You expose yourself within the system, you ultimately could end up being forced out of the system. I remember confronting my immediate supervisor, the number three person, about what are we doing? We're in violation of the Constitution. Many Secret Service uh, employees are disillusioned. Why are we taking equipment that is traditionally foreign-facing, foreign outward-facing, and we're now instrumenting our networks within the United States of America? If you are surveilling the population, you're all on the same side. Right? You want all the data, and you want to talk to people who have the most data. So the NSA is a nexus of surveillance for the world. It's whatever you could get away with. That was part of the game. And it was ever whatever would serve in the interest of national security. When one is forced to act against one's moral values, you can experience extreme levels of what we call cognitive dissonance. I had damals keine Hilfe. I had 10 years gebraucht, um, um to erkennen wofür ich bei der Staatssicherheit verantwortlich gewesen bin. I was radioactive because I'm questioning what are we doing? Where do you then go? Where does your life then, where do you recreate your life? What Intellexit does is help individuals transition from the world on the inside to the world on the outside. Wissen Sie, dieser Intellexit Verein ist wirklich eine gute Sache. The more you can move from the inside to the outside, the better you'll integrate into the real world. What is really great about Intellexit is that it helps people to confront their fears. So take it from me, if you're looking to get out, try Intellexit. Be smart. Exit intelligence now. Schneier there. They just say Bruce Schneier's like amazing pitch at the end. Like who knew he had those talents? Like t someone take him to acting school. <laughs> like it's amazing. Um, okay, so then we made the video, but of course we knew we know that the people that we're talking to, uh, the spies, are some of the most introverted people in the world, and probably some of the, the people most stuck in a filter bubble in the world. So we knew we had to had to kind of take our outreach further, and we had to go to where they are. So, you know, we thought big and we pretended, we just forgot about the fact that we didn't really have a budget and we just hired a van because that's what you do. So we just hired this van and um, we drove around Fort Meade uh, and the NSA buildings, tried as much as we could to get as close as possible to them as we could. <laughs> so, <laughs> This is outside Lockheed Martin on um, National Business Parkway, which is the, the main area of all the um, NSA contractors, tractors, and they're really best friends with the NSA, and now they've started making drones as well. They've been supplying technology uh, to the military and the CIA and NSA forever. Um, so that's us parked outside there, giving them a like, strong moral punch with the, with the <laughs> slogan. And then we went to... Um, one of the most popular cafes where NSA officers and contractors like to go for lunch, this Cafe Joe, and we parked out there during lunchtime as well. <clears throat> and then, of course, 
that's because you can't talk about the secret services in one country without talking about the other ones, because they're all in bed with each other. We, of course, had to go to the UK as well. So here we are outside um, the donut, and this is um, us trying, well, okay, to be honest, <laughs> That's trying to hand out fly brochures to the people, like that was our plan, you know, we're gonna hand them out to the employees on their way to work, and they were just like, Vroom. they had like been briefed, or I don't know, they were just like <laughs> ignoring us, and also maybe didn't brief that guy very well on what to dress as an Intel exit ambassador. <laughs> um, and then we hit all the... <laughs> This is outside the Dagger Complex in Germany, one of the um, lesser known spots for the NSA, or, or kind of central hub for the signals intelligence uh, gathering in Europe. It's been written about in the Spiegel, very secret, very difficult to get there as well. Um, and yeah, there we are again from the other side, and that is the antenna from the Dagger Complex. And then we also went to Wiesbaden, which is the uh, traditional home of the US military in Germany. Um, and the Clay Kaserne building, this is where um, supposedly forthcoming is going to be one of the NSA's biggest buildings and operations in Europe. Also all very secret, no one knows what's going on. Um, and then we went to the US Embassy um, in Berlin. And this for non-German speakers, it just says, enough with paranoia. That's why we had the like Dadaistic uh, pineapple on there. We're helping you to uh, get out of the secret services. And then we went to the German secret services as well. This is their new office block, the Bundesnachrichtendienst. <laughs> and we also went to their old offices, just in case. <laughs> And then we went to, we did a lot in a week. <laughs> we went to the um, Verfassungsschutz, which is the domestic uh, intelligence in Germany, and this is uh, located in Köln. And um, to remind them about, so the Verfassungsschutz actually stands for, it roughly translated in English, is protectors of the constitution. And in order to remind them about the constitution, we stuck the constitution on their, on their wall there. And then you've got to... <laughs> And then there's, there they are ripping it up. This was like a dream that we had for a very long time and finally we realized it. <laughs> um, yeah. And then we thought we'd take a bigger step. to sources, uh, Intel Exit website was blocked on the um, <laughs> on the internal network after that dropped. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was that was our week, and that was Intel Exit. Um, and yeah, I. I just want to share a few learnings with you um, because it was a very interesting campaign for us and one of a kind, really. Um, so I think the first thing on a very kind of just basic level is that it is possible to talk about this issue without creating fear and without making everyone um, you know, really worried about their information and their data and their just general feeling of well-being. There is a way to kind of shift the narrative and, and look, look more at the outside and, and stop holding the defensive. Um, got it. Okay, then second thing is that <laughs> they're just as good at faking as we are. This was um, the response from the GCHQ to a journalist in um, question for an article about Intel Exit, um, which is amazing because they basically just said that you know, they don't do anything unlawful and they actively encourage staff to discuss any concerns that they have. Um, 
inside, which we all know is not true. And they also, they really pride themselves on the structures they have in place to support this. Um, so I think this was the biggest surprise for us. Like we we're always dealing in this kind of projecting of either utopias or dystopias out into the world. And sometimes when you have a vision and you project something out, actually it kind of turns into reality and, that, and that's what happened. Um, you know, we played this line of, yes, it's sort of a fake, but at the same time we really mean what, we, what we're putting out here. Yes, we actually think there should be an Intel Exit Foundation created um, and there should be loads of money flowing in for people um, who want to get out and there should be a civil way to exit. Um, but, you know, <laughs> What can we do? We're just like a small art collective in Berlin. Um, you know, we can make a big wave, um, but we're quite limited on our resources. Um, but actually, we, we got responses. We got, we got people coming to us. Um, and and that, was like, that was a real surprise. And we realized we have a lot of responsibility, too. Um, and so this is the other learning, is that there's no clear line between insanity and reality. So you kind of constantly, when you get people contacting you, there's this like, of course you get people who think that they are pursued by the CIA or think that they used to work at the Secret Service. Um, and then there's, you know, people who talk to aliens and these kinds of things. And, um, and, then, and then you get people with uh, re really legitimate stories and um, there's a kind of constant balance and we've really had to learn how to assess these. Um, and uh, luckily we've had amazing support um, from jo investigative journalists, particularly from uh, whistleblower uh, platforms who have experience with this and can help us. Um, but that's just part of the game. Okay, so I think that's our other learning is that what we realized at the end of this week is that there really is a need for this, that there's a need to respond um, and to respond to, um, well, to respond to the kind of the discourse that's out there and create a new one. And then there's also really a need to provide um, this, this kind of support and actually to reach out to people who are um, trapped in these structures and who want to get out. Um, so we've been working really hard and trying to build up um, net a network of support with people who are, um, have legal skills, who have, psych who have psychological training, um, and who can also help if people want to get out and leak or blow the whistle, can help with that. So we're kind of, at the moment, we're, when people come, we're, we're trying to direct them to the, to the right resources, because of course we're not a whistleblowing platform, and we're not, um, you know, we're not a, legal organization, so we, we can't provide a lot of the things, but we have good networks, and we can try and uh, connect people to them. Um, so, what's coming next? Um, we're trying to build up our infrastructure so that people can actually have a very secure way to contact us. Um, we're building up this network of support, and we want to create a list of emplo future employers for people who actually do leave the Secret Services so that they can find places to get jobs afterwards. And we want to continue doing more outreach and more campaigning on this issue, and I think that that, that is our main goal. Um, so... <laughs> that's... Um, that's a safe within a safe, which is um, now part of our kind of secure comms infrastructure that is happening in our office, thanks to the support of very experienced and knowledgeable and expert people who can help us set up the, the kind of the best way for people to, to kind of, yeah, to, in terms of ris a risk assessment, um, set up the best, the best appropriate means of communication to us. Um, and then on our outreach plans, we really want to um, create a way to talk to people working in the Secret Services. Um, for an everyday person in this audience or on the stage, just to call up um, the NSA or the BND or the GCHQ and get through to someone who's sitting at their office on their phone and have a conversation with them, like call center style, you know, like, how are you doing today? Can we talk about your job? How, what? <laughs> How do you feel about working at the Secret Services? Um, you know, so we, we want to create an anonymous routing system for someone to call completely anonymously um, to a set of numbers which we can't reveal the source of um, <laughs> and to reach out to these people. So, of course we need support and help, 
And these are all the things that you can help us with. <laughs> so um, if you've got skills, we need <laughs> all kinds of skills. We need skills to um, build up this uh, call center operation of ours um, so that people can actually anonymously call and we can have something um, something that is very exciting and we can premiere at events um, so that you can actually have kind of call center, call center operations on stage, calling up, doing it live. Um, and then we also need people who will translate our materials. Um, we would like to get them into a number of languages. We only have uh, in English and German at the moment and we would like to be able to kind of reach out more internationally. Um, and if you've if you've got connections, well, that's also always good. If you've got people who, if you know people who um, are lawyers, who have had experience working with um, people who are either in trauma or um, are people who have been in the Secret Service, for example, um, legal skills, psychological skills, uh, journalists, we need all those kinds of connections in different jurisdictions. We're pretty well um, set up in Berlin and in Germany but we really need help in the UK and the US as well for now. And then if you've got ideas for outreach, for new actions, we're also really open to hearing about those. We've got the call center idea at the moment, calling up the spies, but we want new ideas. And if you know people who are working there, just have that conversation with them. Like just start a conversation about you know, ethics at the workplace. Um, and now is the big, <laughs> the big question. And I even uh, did that to, <laughs> to say how important it is. If you like Peng's work, we're not ashamed anymore. We were ashamed for a long time to ask for money, but we're not ashamed anymore. Um, we live off idealism alone, people, and we need help to keep our actions going. Uh, this year, I think we did six actions or something, really large campaigns. Um, and we need help to kind of to support our infrastructure, um, to support our staff, to support our projects more than anything, so that we can keep on doing what we're doing. So we've um, we've developed a way for you to become a monthly donator, which I highly recommend. Great feelings of um, positivity and love will travel with you for many years after you have done this. Um, and Mother Teresa said, you know, if you can't feed 100 penguins, then just feed one. So feed one of us, <laughs> even if it's just like the pinky finger of one of us, um, and sign up for a year to keep seeing great actions coming out from Peng. And that's me. And then we've got one more thing. Surprise, where are you? Hello. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So we have one other awesome way to donate, which is that you can buy one of the awesome Intel Exit t-shirts, which uh, Paul is going to come here and model for us quickly. Um. <laughs> and there's a run for your life. That's the kind of lame one, but these ones are cool. <laughs> Thank you. So, oh, are we meeting afterwards? Um, yeah. 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 Okay. So I think we're going to have a. We don't have time for questions and answers now, but we really want to get feedback from people. I think there's been IRC chat already happening, but if people want to come, we're going to meet. Where are we meeting? Uh, in front, maybe. In front um, <laughs> <laughs> of this huge hall. Um, <laughs> does, does, can someone give me a location? I only got here today. <laughs> Can you give us a location? Okay, so it's sensible to meet at the tea tent, I suppose. Tea tent in, in 15 front of minutes. Hall two, there's a big tea tent where you get tea and where you also um, meet many other people who are working in this direction of work, yes. right? And I have one question still because, um, like you told, we can support on the internet. Is there also a way to donate anonymously? Um, well, you can donate with Bitcoin, or you could just give us cash. Anybody has big piles of cash, <laughs> bring them I mean, here. <laughs> not saying no to cash. <laughs> Thank you, Gloria. Okay. Thank oh, you, Paul. A bag. And there's a bag for cash. <laughs> you can put it in very anonymously here.
Okay, bring your, your blocking for your face if you won't really be anonymous. Yeah. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you. Everybody who wants to come, please go to the tea tent.